Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek X Sex Chic, and we are back with a brand new series. Yes, this is one that I've had my eye on for a while, and I debated back and forth about whether or not I should react, but then I decided, you know what, let's do it. Why? Because this is something that has been close to my heart for a very long time, and that is the new show on Marvel Animation, which is called X-Men 97. I am one of those girlies that I watched the OG X-Men from back in the 90s. Yes, I used to get up and watch that sucker. It used to come on Saturday mornings for us back then, and I was obsessed. I loved the show. I had, like, for a while, they had these trading cards you could get from, like, gas stations and corner stores. I have, like, a whole booklet of those somewhere. But anyway, <laughs> I was into it, is my point. I really, really liked the series. I liked the characters that were there. And yeah, I watched that show until it went off the air. And so like one of my, my ringtone for the longest time was the original theme song of that show. So like I said, huge fan of the OG. And I've loved a lot of the things that have come out about X-Men since. And it's really exciting to see Marvel Animation put out something in the X-Men universe finally. And if, of course, if you know the history behind Disney and Marvel, you already know why this has taken so long, but X-Men has always been like my first major introduction to Marvel Comics and Marvel Comic characters. So yeah, I mean, it's just nice to see them start to slowly put their footprint into the Marvel Universe. And I'm hoping that it's definitely a beacon for more of that coming to us in the future. I'm not gonna say near future because I know that things are a little bit hectic at Disney at the moment. But anyhow, this makes me excited though. And yeah, seeing this remastered animation, but seeing these characters that I'm very familiar with, Rogue, Storm, Cyclops, Wolverine in the OG costume, Beast, Gambit, like these are people I recognize. So it's gonna be really nice and nostalgic, but probably also a big refresher because I honestly don't think I've watched any of those episodes in, well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna say those numbers out loud, but it's been a minute. So I'm excited to see how they're gonna handle this new one. It's been getting great reviews from everyone who had a chance to see it already. So it makes me excited and I don't think I'm gonna be disappointed. So I don't think I need to say much more about it. We're gonna jump in. I'm gonna actually watch the first two episodes. I usually only do one episode per reaction, but I'm just gonna put these two together because they are only half an hour and because, you know, they were released together. So that's what we're gonna be doing and we're gonna jump in. But just before I do, if you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I do a lot of reactions here to all kinds of stuff, including Marvel stuff. And if you'd like to follow me on this journey or support me on anything else, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified when the uploads of this show pop up, hit that, that notification bell. There we go. <laughs> and you will be notified uh, right away. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it so much if you showed some love, thumbs up, comments, all that good stuff. I really love hearing from you guys. All right, that out of the way, let's get into episode one, which is called, To Me, My X-Men, right now. Hold on, we gotta turn up the theme song. <laughs> Hold on. Rogue, my favorite character. I mean, of course, Storm, special place in my heart, but Rogue. So satisfying. I do like, they, they revamped it a little bit more cinematic, but I do miss that little bell. <laughs> if you know, you know. The mutant leader's assassination last year by former NSA agent Henry Gyrick has spurred increased sympathy toward mutants despite their strange power. Strange. <gasps> wow, that doesn't look sympathetic at all. Oh, you're such a man. When is not an issue. Beauty thinks it's about cash. Funny. I mean, didn't you just say it was? I'm not like the ones on TV. I'm one of the good ones. A good mutant. Now that is rich. You're touching me inappropriately. Oh, the weather's getting a little, a little feisty. Mistress of the you better tell him. She ain't joking. Again, harder. The stick didn't go over so well, did it? Pardon me, Bishop, for striving to resolve matters peacefully. Right? She's like, I thought they recognized greatness when they heard it and saw it. X Men are like roaches. You see one, more are coming. Good boy. Hey there. What'd you say about roaches now? Good guy or bad guy? Just run. 
so satisfying to see Cyclops again. Oh, oh! Oh god, who was that? Colossus? Colossus? Oh, it's been so long. You freak shows think we wouldn't find a way to evolve too? Take his visor before he starts up again. No, don't! I surrender! Nope. Yeah, he's like, I don't need the visor, dummy. They found out the hard way. Stop the bad guys, save the kids, got home safe. Wow, Remy's look is spicy. And Storm and Bishop are made of sterner stuff than you think. Rogue always comes to Gambit's rescue. I mean, she might have a little special place for you, darling. Simmer down, you're gonna die of a stroke. Oh my god. Calm down and Scott do not mix. Where both human and mutant live free of your total disdain for fun. Wow. Stop being a creep more. Right, that's that's a little too soon. It's a little too soon, bro. Maybe this here. Damn. I mean, in that house, I feel like that's the one place he can't play with his powers. <laughs> Not him sounding like a horror soundtrack. Hey, how fares the boy? Besides, the boy's right there. Mr. DaCosta here is in perfect health. I need to go. Where's my jacket? Right? I've had enough. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Today's been a day and you're coming at me with giant robot arms? Your attackers could still be out. Right? Like, this isn't gonna end. So now you're kidnapping me. Kidnapping? We want to help mutants. Even arrogant yuppies like you. Oh, she called you out. Just give us the data to figure this out. Make sure you're safe, and then you can go do whatever a kid like you does. <laughs> Rich kids? Nothing. We are nature's oh favorite children. Go take a nap and have a Snickers, Magneto. That's Magneto. Professor's ex bestie. They had a uh, different takes on mutant human. Putting it mildly, yes. <laughs> oh, come on, have fun. Get the life. Oh, God. Hi. Show the lady some respect. Mm hmm. Can we stop now? He's not you part of the simulation. Program. Yeah, he's really that crazy. Scary enough for you, bub. <laughs> This is how Wolverine makes friends. Don't get upset. If he punches you in the tummy, besties. He'd need a master mold factory to build new sentinels and new X-Men destroyed the only one years ago. Did you? You and I alone. Our whole future ahead of us. The team, they'll always be family, but with the baby coming. This is a real family. Beyond the X-Men? Beyond? You mean leave the team? I mean, you're going to have another responsibility. Our son will need us more. Deep down, you know that. And maybe that's what scares him. It's okay for you to let go. Oh, jeez. Wow, okay. Kids. You sure you don't want to leave this behind, Scott? Logan, take that nose of yours and go find the kid. And take Jubilee. He's like, yep, act like an attack dog. Go. Go with them. Hey now, we didn't do a dang thing. Right? Just shooting hoops. But I don't much go in for being bossed around. Fry me a river, Wolverine. <laughs> Logan. Oh, mm-hmm. You better mm -hmm, turn on those eyes. Please. Do it for me. Simp. That's right, I'm Jubilee. We might as well just get a little dancing while we're here. Aw, oh, I know, sweetie. Any Sucks. worthwhile man would gladly suffer your hand in a dance. Aw. I always like these two, actually. It's my favorite one of my favorite couplings. You don't think they're leaving the team morph genes, maybe. Yep. He's smarter than he looks. Oh god. They're still alive. I can't believe this kid's out here with glow sticks. Clearly being kidnapped is nothing to him. He just wants to be kidnapped again. Okay. Peace, love, I get it. But do you have to make such a big stink about it? Is that why you didn't use your powers against those goons? What are his powers? Ever wish ran when they saw us coming. 
drops one of their little toys too. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because I know it's it's supposed to be for friends of humanity, but it just makes me think of F out of here. Why would I know where Trask is? Why wouldn't you? Did you honestly think we'd roll over and let mutants take over the planet? Who said that was our plan? No, you're in vogue, Storm. A fad. Look at my mutant friend. Damn. We're under all that fashionable sympathy. Normal people know the more room we make for your kind, the less we What are normal? Yours. Yeah. These are real bars, you guys, about performative allyship. And you get an A for effort, Mr. Summers. But we both know you're no Charles Xavier. I don't think he tried to be. No, but have you met my wife? Yeah, she can get in your head. You know that, right? Hatred weakens your mind, Mr. Gyrick. Mm-hmm. Allowing me to penetrate your thoughts from any distance. Silly boy. Get out of my head. No, I won't. Something's wrong. Someone else. Uh-oh, who's in there? Okay, she's not even pregnant anymore. What happened? This Uno reverse of someone being in her head while she's in someone else's. That child looks 45. Okay. We have to stop Trask now. All right, so Trask is playing with the devil. Is that a shock to anyone? I'm with I'm with Logan. We need to stop with all this nicey nicey. Why? Nah, weight loss. Exactly. See, it's all about how you frame it. What would we do if we ever lost you? Wow. I knew something was about to happen when he said that. All right. How many of y'all can fly? Only Storm. Excellent. Now what do we do? Oh no, I'm rogue. That's helpful. Logan would heal. I'm kidding. That is a way to slow your fall. Very destructive, but effective. To me, my X-Men. Your X-Men? Okay. We don't want to fight. He does. I mean, all humans are animals. You waited for him to... Okay. This is why you need to listen to Logan sometimes. You should have just zapped his hand off. You're literally in a sentinel graveyard. The music. Look, you better do that pile driver again, ma'am. Batter up. And why do I think Trask is just buying time while y'all fight with these guys? Might I induce you to a change of heart? Beast, you are so cute. This ship is so cool. Oh, that's a nice little warm up. Now there's more. <laughs> yes, I love that they reminded everybody that she's that girl. You can't even measure what she got. That's where Storm's at, baby. God S. The slow walk. Yes, girl. That's right, you better strut because the world is your catwalk. That's right. The nerve, the audacity. She got the ancestors behind her too. Wakanda, everything. It's raining sentinels. Huh? That guy's a big boy. That's cool. Teamwork is dream work, baby. I love this. Because as much as we love the Avengers, they didn't give us this type of dream work, teamwork. As far as coordinating powers, they obviously work together. Hey, thanks for showing up, Blade. You X-Men might use your gifts to protect everyone, but all you do is remind us that our days are numbered. Remind you. You've no idea how it feels to be left behind by the future. See, there's the crux of it. That is the real crux of it. The fact that he feels like he's being left behind means he's got to make all mutants enemies. This isn't some weird school. It's a family. A family that accepts you. Hmm. Sounds nice. Scary as well, because that means you'll have to care. Some 
sort of solar energy. Still figuring it out. Makes Ooh. me strong. It just reminds me that I'm different, that I'm lying to them. Well, lying part, not so good, but different is amazing. Here. Hey, what's your job? Hot and rich? Oh, forget single. Not the hot, I was about to say. Mm -hmm. to maybe I'll even let you fly it. Oh, well, done. Let's get married. But what is, what are we now? <laughs> you promised me a jet baby and that's pretty much a proposal. Gina and I have an announcement. The announcement. You're bailing on us to go raise your little one someplace nice and normal. Logan, we're not bailing. Rude. Sensors show the intruder has breached the professor's old office. <gasps> that's sacred. Perhaps that is why the old fool has done this. What do you want, Magneto? What are you doing in our home? Your, your hair is glorious, though. The last will and testament of Charles Francis Xavier. Francis! Everything he built, everything he fought for, now belongs to me. My X-Men. X -Men. Ah, Charles, Charles, you were always one with a wicked sense of humor. Oh, look at all the profiles. Yes. We like it a lot. Okay, is there anything more? Just double checking? No, okay. All right, guys, well, that was the first episode, which I liked a lot. It brought back a lot of those memories of what the first, you know, the original X-Men was all about, how they worked together. And of course, they were coming into a timeline where there is no Professor X, which of course is a bit, you know, considering what's been actually happening in the MCU lately, it, it, it triggers a nerve, but... Either way, we're seeing that the team is trying to figure out their place now that Charles is not there. And Scott, because he was one of the first X-Men, he feels like it falls to him to be the next leader, but he's not sure what kind of leader he even wants to be. He's trying to emulate Professor X, which he never can because Professor X is a completely different person. He had a different viewpoint, even his abilities, um, you know, it allowed him to be a different kind of person. Scott's not him. He just really has to recognize that it's okay for him to be a different kind of leader if he's going to lead the X-Men. He doesn't have to follow what Scott, what, uh, sorry, what Professor X would have done to the letter because he's not Professor X, as I mentioned. But yes, we see that there is still this issue with Sentinel Tech being out there. They managed to track it back to Trask, but Trask has never been a man of one or two tricks. We, I have no doubt that there's more out there. And we saw that, of course, Gene had a vision of that, uh, what was the name? I forgot the name already, but yeah, that machine. And it seemed like it was far more powerful than what we just saw in that, in that desert. So I feel like that was all a big distraction just to get the X-Men out there. But I do think this is definitely just the beginning of the threats that they're going to face. Trask has always been adamant that mutants have to go or at least be completely controlled or both. And so, yeah, it is just the beginning. But outside of that, we have a new mutant on the scene, uh, young Roberto, I think his name was, who is new to his powers, still figuring it out. And we all know that the best place for you to figure out your powers is in the Xavier School for the Gifted. So I definitely think we'll be seeing more of him. I'm not sure who he coincides with in the comics. I said I watched the original show and I had the cards, but I do not know all the Marvel canon. It is so vast. And so there's a lot of characters I don't know. So please don't come for me for not knowing right away who he's supposed to represent, but... I look forward to getting to see more of him. And I like the cute little, you know, back and forth he's got going on with Jubilee, another character that I really liked as well in the comics and as well uh, in this show. And the other thing I just kind of wanted to touch on that I think the show does a good job of, and it's gonna be a theme throughout this show is this mutants versus humans and the mindset around it, right? Like the, the crux of what the X-Men dealt with, what Charles fought for, and especially what Magneto fought for was this, prejudice that existed between some humans and mutants. And I really like that it, it was only a small line in here, but you hear Trask say that, you know, you guys are the next step of evolution, but you know, you're animals. And then after that, he's like, you know, it's not fair that it feels like humanity is leaving me behind. Like it's a bad feeling. And I love that he said that because that's the crux of why the people who are a part of the uh, friends of humanity or the, the Trasks out there or the guy that was in jail. All these people who are mutant haters are so against mutants is because there's a fear for them that with mutants existing and having these gifts and being different from them and them actually carving out their own space in society that somehow means there's less for humans or less for them. And that's the root of any level of prejudice. In our real world, people who are prejudiced against certain groups or um, ethnicities, etc. it's often rooted in a fear of 
losing out somehow. They think they're somehow gonna lose something by them gaining something. And it's just so sad because that's just never the case. The world is a massive place with so many resources and so many opportunities and so many things. It's infinite. There's not enough people in the world to even begin to take from that. And so when people understand that, they'll realize that, hey, even if I don't necessarily like that person or I'm a little scared of maybe some of the things that are going on over there, them existing in a way that does not harm me is fine. It doesn't take away from me or my life, right? But unfortunately, fear doesn't quite work that way. And so that's really what's fueling a lot of these extremists in the human side of things. And then we've got, of course, in the mutant side, to be fair, there are extremists there as well that feel like exactly what that man said, that they are the next step in human evolution. You heard Magneto in that simulation saying that they are God's favored ones in his mind. And so he believes that they should think that they're better than everyone. But of course, if you know Magneto's story, you know that a lot of that comes from trauma and not necessarily a genuine rooted belief that mutants are necessarily better. But anyway, I just like that they're touching on these things because I think it's going to the be a theme that continues to be touched on throughout this series because the X-Men and Charles Xavier, that was a huge part of their storyline that I remember anyways. So yeah, I kind of like the messaging that it puts out there though, because even though this is a fictitious world, it's always good to have those reminders of how these things can lead to divisions or how things can lead to bridges to, you know, bring people together. So yeah, great first episode. I liked it. I think they nailed all the characters really, really well. The voice acting was good. The animation is really fun. I love that it's both a combination of retro, but you see the smoothness of the new animation. And yeah, it just feels like I'm going back to my childhood. So it's a lot of fun, but I'm ready to get on to the next episode. So I will be jumping into that. It is called Mutant Liberation Begins. I'm really interested to see what uh, changes that Magneto was planning to introduce to the team now that he's part of it. We know that Charles and uh, Magneto had a very interesting relationship that spanned many decades and a lot of ups and downs, but what they fundamentally could never get over is how to handle the whole mutants versus humans situation. But the one thing that was at least the case in the comics and in the old show was that Charles always believed deep down that there was good inside of Magneto, that beyond all of the hurt and the pain and the anger and the hatred, there actually was a person who knew what was right and wrong and had a good heart. So if he left everything to Magneto, he had a reason for it. And so we'll have to see how the team deals with that because they've been looking at him as an enemy for a long time. So yeah, looking forward to jumping into the next episode. So let's do that right now. We can skip the recap, but never the intro. <laughs> Satisfying every time. Kevin Feige was producing this. Shut up. That man is so rich. Mm hmm. Don't need mutants, huh? Soon to tell how recent events will impact mutant human relations. One thing is clear to both humans and mutants. I don't get it, Gene. Hmm. Did the professor not trust me? I mean, it's not always about you, Scotty. By the former mutant. Terrorist who's gone missing after failing to launch a mutant rebellion. Mm -hmm. She Charles looks about as impressed as Scott does. Please don't hurt Leech. The depths you humans go. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Is that made of metal? Right, dummy. How unfortunate for you. You should have shocked her harder. Exactly, thank you. It's the letting her live part, you know? I'm just kidding. You shall never be afraid again. Hmm. Him and Charles really did want the same thing, just the method, nowhere near the same. Look, plenty of at this table have passed so dirty they don't squeak no matter how much spit you got. Right? Truest things said at the table. Saddens me that none of you, nor Xavier himself, thought to use his considerable finances to do the same. But his whole point was integration. The tragic fact that I did not consign those sapiens to the waste bin of history as proof <laughs> of honor Charles Xavier's dream. It was hard for him, I know it was. Coexistence. <laughs> okay. Ugh, coexistence. <laughs> Even if I sensed Magneto's intentions were sincere, that's today. This hour. Exactly. This minute. 
Man, we check every minute of every day. Do you think she got that kind of time? Like it or not, this is what the professor wanted. Yeah. Please. My intentions here were not to cause drama. But why are we putting hands on shoulders? You must and Storm. You are the closest thing to a goddess. Oh, we appreciate seen. the recognition. That's right. Xavier wanted this. Maybe he was wrong. <gasps> Blasphemy. Even Charles Xavier can make a mistake. Mm, didn't think you guys were going to bond on that one, did you, Scotty? I need to tell you something, and I need you not to judge me too harshly. Or tell Scott. Oh, I'm telling. I'm telling! That he must always be careful, always be on guard, or else... You wish him to be born human. You just want him to have a better life, or an easier life. <sighs> just ever since I was in Gyrick's mind, I can't shake this feeling that something terrible is coming. Because you're right. You're always right about that. I wish to be alone, Rose. Well, welcome to the mansion. That doesn't happen. I would always sense Charles in my mind. Not invading, more a presence. Hmm. I was in his thoughts and he in mine. When he... Magneto was cut, y'all. It's distracting. I... But you were worried if you still felt how much he loved you, you wouldn't be able to go through with your crusade. Oh, deep. I am indebted to honor his last wish. Even if his X-Men won't trust me. His X-Men. My past is too littered with error. My You're not alone. Too. Right? The thing is, I didn't go about demanding their trust. Earned it. I earned it. It's the only way. To avoid being alone with me, Rogue. Not quite ready for that. That was a long time ago, Eric. And that cat's got to stay in its bag. You hear me? It most certainly will not now. Y'all just think you can land on people's private property? We don't lose our cool when the good guys show up. Maybe you should, though. You were saying? Mm-hmm. It's probably because of you, Magneto, in fairness. You are kind of a bad guy. Our rifles are resistant to your electromagnetic powers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yep, he's always going to go for that angle. He's not as patient as Charles. Never been. He's not the one, sis, or the two. I hereby place you under arrest for crimes against humanity. You will stand trial at the UN headquarters. Should I successfully vindicate myself in what I will generously assume... <laughs> the sarcasm. Crime, ...will I earn your trust? That is how due process works. Really? Then... Die! Just kidding. <laughs> Have you seen Scott? Oh, he's there with the others making sure Magneto doesn't pull one of his stunts. Oh. He didn't tell me. Uh-oh. A lot of that going around lately. Oop. Mind your business. She's pregnant with another man's baby. Come on now. Folks out there want the UN Ted just as much as his. Stir the pot, boys, and keep them distracted. I'll only have one shot. <sighs> may now speak. I don't like it, but at the same time, actions have consequences, and Magneto went ha He went ham. In history's sad song, there is a refrain. Believe differently. Love differently. Be of different sex or skin and be punished. It's in this song. Man's preaching. The oppressed become oppressors. Mm -hmm. A future where human and mutant could relinquish the past and finally uh, coexist. Justice <laughs> the way he says it, like he's about to throw up every time. Do nothing to heal those hurt by your crime. And your soundbite indignation will not heal mutant. Right? Let's. There's two sides being hurt here. Humanity must protect itself. Mm -hmm. And what about mutants? Is extermination. I have hoped to avenge crimes against my people. As you act to avenge those against Right? Those Look at that. Against. Two sides of the same coin, huh? That in the face of what you consider to be extermination. What you consider to be. You would walk Charles Xavier's path. Well, not, not perfectly. Protest is a breach in the perimeter. They must want Magneto. And the judges, ma'am. What in the blazes did we do? Well, you know, this is how mobs work, sir. Oh, 
play by the rules and still they come for you. Right? He's like, look at y'all proving my point. Logan. Oh, not labor now. He's here. Apocalypse. The baby, you the idiot. The baby. <laughs> not even ready to chop the child up. Claws away, sir. Woo, God. Careful, Take a life while trying to give birth. Come on now. What, the sidewalk? She's going to, she gonna make it alive? Almost there. Oh God, okay, yep, that's the problem with having a mutant in labor, guys. I am unable to ascertain the nature of the weapon on his back, but his armor is constructed from an energy-resistant titanium-laced alloy. What does that even mean? Executioner, here of to course. make sure gene freaks like Magneto pay for their crime. Like, and people don't understand this is why mutants do what they do. Round two, absorb this. Damn. Hurt my friends? Well, now you answer to me. Don't talk big yet. He took down two of you. You know what I hate about your kind? You act like you got it so bad. Normal oh my people gosh. have it hard too. Harder. We just have the dignity. That's so good. Wow. This is, this rhetoric is so triggering because it's so true. Thank God for Psylocke! Oh my God, I love Psylocke! Sorry, that was a little too loud. Fly Cyclops to Gene immediately. Magneto and I will protect the judges. Be careful, Storm. It's still Magneto. Circumstances do not offer us a choice. Right? I think we need Magneto. And call her Magneto. You. Well, now, who does she think she Do not think. Be silent. Heed me. Exactly! Don't you ever, ever talk back to the queen. Rudeness. I don't think you remember who you're talking to. You people can lose control of your powers. And if she needs a Oh, you know, he's not wrong. She did ruin your car on the way here. Can you use your powers to Does it work like that? I thought it was just powers. I trust you. We both do. Enough. You all need to sorry, sugar. Yep, you made her do this. Prep an IV and get this lady to a room. Okay. I guess it makes sense because she says it takes on whatever their powers are, and I guess his is the skill to deliver a baby. I've always just looked at his like power and life force. I learned something new today. Oh damn, whole you in play. Oh, oh. The Those that the swords are cool. The swords are cool. Let us see how their mob manners fare against the shock of the conduct. Okay, but Magneto is still kind of a hot dude, but I'm just saying. I don't hate it. Magneto. No! 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 The system, really? Where the hell do you think you're going? No, let's not save his life. No, he touched Storm. It's a it's a wrap. No, Storm. The breeze is gone. I cannot feel it. Nor the moisture. Nor the air. What has he done to me? This is not okay. Magneto. This was not what Oh, wasn't it? Okay. All the X Men have done is use their awesome power. To I'm I'm on a, I'm 100 Team Magneto on this one. I say as I have too many times before, never again. <laughs> oh. Yep, sorry, I, I'm on, I'm I'm Team Magneto on this one. You heard Storm, you heard Storm, you heard Storm. So no. Oh no, don't cry now. You were really bad a second ago. Are you taking them to the sun? Please do. No. Cold up there for you guys. There was a time I would smite you all for what- Can we not just for storm? storm? Just for storm? Just this once. I have saved you from your own. For an old friend has challenged me to remember this view of Earth. How vast it is. Versus how small we make it. Mm. But merely to accept that this yeah. is a shared world. Exactly. I am trying to be better. As much as it's 
really not worth it for people like him. Do not make me let you down. Ooh, I like the way they played that line. The United Nations stunned the world this week when it He got that pardon, baby. Know that. To admit the mutant nation of Genosha into the United Nations. Oh. <laughs> Poison. <laughs> He's like, that's what I would do. <laughs> This mean you trust me to carry on Xavier's dream. The professor trusted you, and I trust him. <sighs> Close enough. I guess that'll have to be enough. Exactly. <laughs> Tragedy lures with fortune first. Damn. This was a good That's dark. for our people. Yet it was not without cost. <laughs> Storm, fix it. Fix it right now. Suppressing a mutant's abilities without the need for a collar itself. Aurora, how long? Forever. The effects appear permanent. We'll fix this. Scott and I are you freaking anyway. better. That's all I gotta say. You freaking better. Hmm. The symbolism that used to be her friend. Yep, I thought so. She's out. Oh, she took off the earrings. It is human nature to crave connection as it is also mutant nature. Mm-hmm. To see, to feel another soul finally seeing yours. Ah, poor rogue. Fragile treasure. One sacrifice. <laughs> He's always up for a beer. <laughs> Not throwing it at him. <laughs> Only to then sometimes watch it break in a blink that changes your life forever. ask questions before judging gambit ask questions and now we walk in two very different worlds <sighs> to be a human <laughs> and we will respect her decision that's so yes not one minute storm will spend a day schlepping it with the basic folk and come right home happy as a i don't think so Jean? Who the hell are you? X-Men. What? Whose baby is that? What's going on? And you ended here. Dang it. Oh, it's just starting to get juicy. Yes. Bring on the plot, guys. Bring on the plot. <laughs> All right, guys. Another solid episode. I like how they definitely ramp things up from episode one. Episode one was very much traditional X-Men. Like I said, the teamwork, the having a problem solving it, them kind of taking out the threat by the end of the episode. And we all know that for these older shows that that's kind of how it all was. Like for the most part, you had an issue, the peak came in the middle of the episode, everything ended with everyone having a beer at the end. But here we are and in this one, we've got some very interesting developments. We see now that Magneto really is trying to get himself settled, but more importantly, he's really trying to show the team that he's taking this mission seriously. Because obviously, even though Charles left all these things to uh, Magneto, Magneto didn't have to take it. He could have just been like, nah, it's not my dream. I'm not going to do it. But clearly, uh, as I mentioned in the last episode, Charles and Magneto have this really, this amazing relationship that's gone on for so long and it's very complex and most of the X-Men had no idea how deep and complex it was but clearly Eric has a lot of love for Charles and always has like that was his best friend even though they kept saying former best friends they never stopped being best friends they just unfortunately had such differing philosophies on what peace for mutants meant that they just couldn't meet back on that same road at least while Charles was still alive so Anyway, we see that the team is still understandably weary of him, except for Rogue, which we're seeing is because the two of them share a closeness that is a little bit more than a lot of the team members seem to know. And she does not want them to know about that closeness because again, they're gonna probably side-eyeing her and not really thinking about the fact that many of these people who are in the X-Men have pasts that are long and shall we say varied before they join this team. And thankfully Charles never cared about that kind of thing, but you know, as humans, we often deal with being a bit judgmental and not recognizing that all of us have, let's say moments and spots in our lives that we're not that proud of. But anyhow, we see that the UN shows up and they want to arrest Magneto, understandably. He's done a lot of bad things on large scales. He literally was the T word and 
they're like, he's, he just appeared after he did all these things and now he shows up and he wants to be the good guy. No, he needs to stand trial. It's fair that people wanted to see some justice or at least to see what kind of man Magneto has become now that he said he's on the good page because why should they believe him? And some may never believe him because they've been personally hurt by him. But anyways, he stands trial. And again, I like that. I've always loved that Magneto is such a, he's such a G, you know, like when she said, they're talking about, don't even think about it. Our guns are resistant. And he's like, really? Your guns? Well, what about your helicopters? What about your, like, there's so many things in our world that are electric based now that Magneto is unstoppable <laughs> for the most part, right? And I mean, I feel like there's probably a level that Magneto could get to where he could even like manipulate the electricity in your body. Because a lot of people don't realize that our bodies hold an electric charge as well. That's why when we have heart attacks or our heart stop, they use electricity to restart it, right? Like Magneto's OP, like he's, he's right up there. But anyways, we see that he decides to submit to this because he's like, I understand that I guess to earn people's trust, I have to show them that I understand that what I did was wrong and that I'm trying to do better. But of course it's not going well. There's a lot of protesters. There are people who don't believe that he deserves a, a trial and that's fair. And then we see the same soldier from the last episode. He has created a weapon that he believes is gonna finally take out people like Magneto and understandable. Like if there's ever a mutant that you'd wanna depower, Magneto would probably be one of them considering his past. And they show up there at the courthouse. And I think they, again, like I said in the last episode, dropped some really, really good bars, uh, real life bars about how bigotry works, how prejudice works, the roots of it, and honestly how these conflicts that so many of them that we're aware, I mean, obviously they're keeping it to mutants and humans in this world, but we all know that these, comic, these comics were created back in the day to talk about real world issues in a different way, right? Like this is one of the reasons why Marvel was started and a lot of these characters and scenarios were created was to address real world situations and real world issues, but put it in kind of a hyperbolic way that was a little less pointed so that maybe people could start to see what these messages were without the lens of their own experience. And so just the things that he talked about around if you just all these different ways that humanity unfortunately is found to separate us and create divisions and say that I'm better than you or I should be scared of you or there shouldn't be any of you. Like it's just, it's this revolving door sadly of all these things that humanity can just do to be just so unkind to one another and unnecessarily. And when these things happen and you do things to try to oppress that group, it happens that in some cases, the oppressed, as he said, become the oppressors. And they just think I gotta be, if you this is the way you treated me, then this is the way that I gotta treat you. And is it right? No, the, the only way that conflicts, especially longstanding ones ever end, if ever, is that one side eventually has to say, even though you've done all these horrible things to me and I definitely owe you, I need to just step back and I'm gonna say, you know what, I want it to end. So instead of me retaliating, I wanna offer a bridge. I wanna offer an olive branch. I want us to heal. And that takes a lot. Like it's so, so difficult to do. <laughs> Hating is easy. Hating and, and being fearful is actually very easy to do. It's much harder to love and accept. And that's what we see Magneto saying, like that is what Charles's dream was. And that's really what Eric wanted at his heart. But when he kept getting this pain, like as he talked about from his childhood on, seeing all these examples over and over again of the worst of humanity, he just got to a point where he let his anger and his own resentment and, and pain take over and just wanna get this desire for revenge rather than healing. Whereas Charles, was that magnanimous person that I just talked about before that said, even though you've hurt me, I know you've done this out of fear and I'm trying to extend an olive branch because I think we can do better. He demonstrated that, right? When he saved those judges and that leader of the UN and the person who hurt Storm, although that part, I'm like, you could have let him drop. He really could have. But anyway, <laughs> the fact that he brought them up there and let them see that I could, I could hurt you. I could end you right now and pretty much a good chunk of people would probably forgive me for this. They'd actually say I was justified. I'm one of them, but <laughs> I'm not going to because Charles, his dream was that we move past this tit for tat. And I'm bringing you here so you guys can understand that this is a world we're all gonna share. Mutants aren't going away, humans aren't going away. So we need to find a way to coexist ideally. <laughs> or no, I, I gotta say the way Magneto does. Ugh, coexist. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's so funny. I love the fact that he's like, I get the vision, but I'm not 100% there yet. I still kind of don't like the humans so much, but I'm getting there. But anyways, uh, really good stuff. And it definitely changed the hearts of the judges. But uh, yeah, the, the soldier, he looked at first shocked and then maybe a little bit surprised. And then he just kind of had a look I couldn't fully read, but I don't think he's 100% won over at all yet. Like his his hatred runs deep and I'm, I'm sure we're gonna find out at some point in the series why he has such a hatred for mutants. But anyhow, yeah, we ended the episode. Unfortunately, it looks like for now, Storm's powers are gone. That gun, it con concentrated some radiation that suppressed your mutant powers and from what our man Beast can see it's permanent. And as you can imagine, that would be devastating to Storm because if you know her backstory, her powers are so much a part of who she is. Like it's not even, it's not, and again, I feel like that's the case with most mutants, but for her, like she genuinely embraced her powers from the second she realized she had them. She's used them for so much good. You know, her history, she was revered. Her whole identity has been built around her powers. And so losing them is so much more personal to her. She's never wanted to be like she said in that talk with Jean, like, yeah, it's kind of, you know, I thought about being human now and then just because it would be easier in the sense of less, less crap to deal with. But no, <laughs> in the end, uh -uh, I love who I am. I love what I have. And so it's going to be a little bit of a journey for her now thinking she's going to have to somehow figure out a way to be human. But as I said, they're going to fix it and they're going to fix it immediately because Storm not being Storm is not acceptable on my watch, kids. She needs to get them earrings back on and get back in the air, commanding people from the skies like the queen she is. But yes, another great episode. This is a great little series, guys. I'm liking it a lot so far. I'm intrigued. Like I'm hooked. I'm ready to watch the next episode, which tells you that they're doing something right. So I am ready to continue with this series and I'm waiting for next week anxiously. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love to this episode and I will see you in the next one.